Thank you, Jana. Thank you for inviting uh, us to present this uh, case study. Um, I would like to ask the people sitting over there to be a little bit quiet, so I don't know if we can do something about that. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's that people, these people there, over there. Okay, good. Uh, so um, the reason they, we were invited to do this, uh, this talk here is because um, Bettina had, uh, like most producers do, a great idea to make a film. Uh, because it was a beautiful story. In fact, uh, the writer of the novel is over there, Lucy Fricke. Uh, she wrote this beautiful book, which takes place in four different countries, in Germany, in Switzerland, in Italy, and then in Greece. Um, Bettina optioned the rights, a screenplay was written, um, she had to set up the, the, the production, find the co-producers, she fortunately chose to work with Heretic in Greece, ourselves, and um, she thought we would do a nice road film that would be follow this, this, this journey that the characters take from Europe, starting from Germany, going down south into the lake uh, region in Switzerland, Italy, Greece. But things went differently uh, because of COVID. Um, and this is why we're here, because actually we had to stop shooting, and this film was the first international cross-country shooting to stop and, res and resume uh, the production after the first uh, lockdown, which affected uh, the entire world. Um, so uh, that's why we're here. <laughs> we're still alive, and we're still happy and friends. Um, uh, so I will pass the word to Bettina. Uh, yes, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, Constantino said it very well. It seemed like a great idea to do a film that travels to all the co-producing countries and has a native story that is born to be a co-production. And uh, it went fine. We found great partners. We found financing. Everything looked good. And then something happened that none of us expected. We were just started shooting. The team was just coming together. And we were brutally stopped by close borders and the pandemic, which for me as a producer was um, many, many problems erased because one is the you're responsible for the people that work for you, you're responsible to the people who give you the money, you're responsible to the story and all of a sudden it's all responsibilities and no solutions. And uh, to make it more interesting, also every country had different rules about when to resume, how to resume, which COVID protocol was to apply. And now I had uh, three national rules and I had to, we had to find a way to incorporate that in something that we could work with. And that was very challenging. <laughs> um, the, the good thing was that um, everybody was, after the first shock, Everybody was very willing to find solutions. Um, we all knew that we had to continue because it was just too short of a time that we could actually shoot. And there was so much more that we had to do. And um, I remember to this day, I get a phone call. The idea was, as he said, to travel from Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Greece. And uh, Italy was completely locked, so there was no chance that we would come to Italy soon. So then I remember the phone call from Constantinos. He, sa he said, I think Greece is going to open up on the 15th of June. And I was like, oh, okay. Then maybe we change the shooting order and we go to Greece first to resume the film. And that's what we did. The problem was there were no commercial planes yet going to Greece. So we had to find a solution how to bring how to bring the crew and the equipment here and um, we, we found that. Then there were a lot of worries about how would the people on the island, we shot on the beautiful island of Amorgos, how would they find foreigners coming after Corona, maybe we bring the virus and they would be very hostile, which turned out not to be. It was a, a very lovely experience to arrive on the island and a very warm welcome. And we actually figured out a protocol that took care of all the COVID protocols so that each 
country. We took the strongest, the, the strictest rule from each country and made a protocol that worked in each of the countries we shut. Um, which sounds easy, but it was not because protocols were changing all the time. And I think I, I read like 500 pages of European Corona COVID working protocols from different countries in different languages, trying to find a way to do this. And one thing that's also maybe is important, the, the whole timing, all the actors and the creative personnel was also booked for other films. There was a lot of negotiation always going on, trying to get everybody back together to actually be able to continue. And so this film, that, which started very fun and light, became one of the hardest production that I ever had to do or that we ever had to do because there was more uncertainty than ever in a movie and there's always a lot of uncertainty. Plus, um, never forget, all of this costs money and it costs more money than planned. So that was also a big problem we had um, to raise more financing and to find out what, what on more support we can have. So I think um, I'm very happy because we it took us the whole year to finish the film. We finished in October. We started in March and we finished in October. And it was a little bit crazy to be the first one to start again, but it was the only chance because I would not have the actresses again for a period of time. So it was either then or never. So we actually rented a plane uh, to come bring everybody from Germany uh, so it would also be in quarantine because we wouldn't meet anybody else uh, on the plane. And so, yeah, we made lots of interesting choices um, that we had to do to continue shooting. Um, uh, I need to say that uh, Bettina has produced 55, 55 films. So from a producer of 55 films, um, this coming, saying that uh, it was the hardest production experience, uh, I guess it means something. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. Um, so when we were on the island, um, <clears throat> we had, uh, with all the films we, we, we do, most of the films we do, uh, we work closely with, uh, of course, all of our authorities. Uh, and our institutions, and we have two of those here. We have the Greek Film Center and the Hellenic Film Commission in particular, uh, Venia Vergu, and uh, we, had, uh, we have uh, ECOME, the National Cash Rebate, uh, and uh, Stelios Kraunakis. Uh, both the Greek Film Center, I need to say, and uh, our Cash Rebate uh, have supported uh, the film. Uh, and um, Venya and I have uh, had uh, very interesting uh, experiences working in various films and trying to sort out different kinds of uh, uh, solutions with, uh, with uh, locations and so on. But that was, well, that was not the case here because our location was pretty simple. We're shooting in the island of Amorgos in one place, one town. It was very simple. Uh, but of course, COVID came and we had other kinds of difficulties to, uh, to face. And I have to say that uh, we've been on the phone a few times trying to figure out what are the measures, the protocols, when is it going to come out, what is it going to entail, and all of that. Um, and Venya was one of the people who visited, actually, the island and came to the set. So I will pass the mic to her. Oh, you, you have your mic. Thank you. Yes, if you can hear me now. Uh, it's true, I was visiting the set and the reason why we decided to do that is because over those months of the pandemic, um, one of the top questions we ever received via phone or over email from producers all over the world was what's, what's happening, if we're shooting, if we are open and if cameras are rolling. So once we knew that there was the first international production shooting, I needed to go there and witness and see how the protocol is followed and how everything is going and how things are done. And um, the truth is that, as Bettina said, there had been a lot of anxiety whether or not Greece would open for international flights because cameras stopped when the pandemic started. Everybody stopped working in mid-March up until the 14th of May when cameras started rolling again. 
but flights didn't start yet. So we had many Greek producers doing their services for international productions that had scheduled screenings like Bettina, and we were always on the phone checking out when they would start. And um, once we knew that they would start, um, it, was, it was something of a big news for us because we wanted to communicate it to uh, the industry worldwide. We wanted to know, to people to know that we are here, we are working. Ecomen never stopped working, receiving applications as well. Stelius will say more about that. And the truth is that it was a big um, and a very happy uh, surprise for me to see that the protocol was followed, as Bettina said, because you had to go through many protocols, because that's another story. Greece had its own protocol, and we collaborated closely uh, with the Ministry of Culture, because they are the, in charge for that. Um, and it was uh, very crucial to see that everything was taken into consideration very seriously in terms of health and safety production, production, because if one case would happen, that would be very bad for the reputation of Greece. And it was the point that we had a production that was, had chosen an island which was COVID-free, and they stayed COVID-free. And also, the, cho the, the, the choice of the island, which is a very characteristic Greek island, well known because of Lick Besson's Grand Blue is also very important and uh, the fact that it is a fi an island which is already film friendly because they are having a film festival there and they are people who are very well supportive. So um, the experience was really uh, useful for us and to be there hands-on and discussing with the producer how it went, it was very, very important to spread the word worldwide. Um, so... Um as I said uh, before, uh, this film was supported by the Greek Film Center and uh, our cash rebate. And um, it has actually received the support of different rebates also uh, throughout Europe from uh, Germany and Italy. Uh, but uh, Stelios is going to present ECOME and their incentive, uh, basically their incentives. He promised to read numbers, so let's listen to them. Okay. Thank you, Kostadinos. Hello, everybody. I'm Stelios Karanakis from ECOME. I, I would like to thank uh, the festival for the invitation. Uh, I will try to give some numbers, as Kostadinos said, to show how the pandemic uh, infected the audiovisual sector in Greece. First, I have to say that ECOME started to function in April of uh, 2018, and the first year uh, already 36 projects submitted for approval, half of them internationals. It is not a bad number at all, I could say, considering that cash rebate programs all over the world need a, minimum, need, need a minimum period of some years to establish a brand name and gain the trust of the investors. Next year was even better. 52 projects were accepted to the cash rebate program, half of them international again. That means an increase of 50%. Moreover, the first five projects was paid. The Greek Cash Rebate pro, uh, pro, uh, Program transferred to their bank accounts almost one million and half and uh, one million and five hundred thousand uh, euros. And then the pandemic arrives. January and February of 2019, 11 projects were submitted, but the next month was not exactly like business as usual. Everybody was very concerned about what is going to happen. There were no safety protocols for shootings, permits, and everything was so uncertain. Everybody was trying to figure out how this is going to end. All these days, ECOME announced that it will remain open for all kinds of applications, for approvals, change of budget, and for payments. ECOME staff was working from distance, from their homes, since uh, all the cash rebate program functioned digitally, all the files are on the cloud, so working from distance was a choice that could follow, we could follow. The target was to send a message that we must find ways to insist. We have to find ways to keep on together. The first application appeared the next month. Until the end of the summer of this year, almost 29 productions submitted their application for approval. The procedure of the approval goes through the work of the approval committee of ECOME that has to examine the, the documents of the projects. 
the committee needed almost 50 separate Zoom meetings to examine all the documents and finally propose to the minister to sign the approval. At the same time, the Special Finance Committee had to participate in almost 80, uh, 28 separate meetings, official and preparation meetings, to examine the invoice and the documents for uh, 14 applications for payments and finance 14 production with an amount of almost 4 million. These committees consisted from ECOME executives working together with Greek film center executives, like Yorgos. And this collaboration is something quite important. Altogether, we try to establish Greece as a brand name for the audiovisual sector and make Studio Greece look like a promising brand name that the producers all over the world would like to shoot their project in Greece. So a lot of LA and New York producers start calling saying that they had announced projects that they, they could not shoot in their countries, looking for another place to shoot, considering that Greece could be an ideal alternative. There is the physical scenery and highly qualified professionals shooting movies with safety holding the COVID protocols and try to keep the doors open. On July of 2020, an amendment to ECOMEL law changes the cash rebate incentives from 35 to 40 on the eligible expenses to boost the incentives more. As a result, on October, November and December, 32 projects were submitted for individual plays, TV series, feature films and some dogs. The totals for 2020 was finally 72 proposals approved at almost 4 million eligible expenditures, uh, 4 million investments spent in Greece. The Special Finance Committee of ECOME paid five more producers, transferring the amount of 5.3 million uh, to 19 producers for the year 2020 in total. The new year, another ECOME law appears. The high budgets Projects with more than 8 million Greek spent can submit non-residential invoices as eligible to the Greek cash rebate incentive. Now the big productions arrive. Greek Freak, Go, Knives Out, Tehran 1 and 2, Apple TV, Cronenberg Slash Film with a Greek co-producer, Baderas in Barracuda, an expendable 4 in Thessaloniki, another big production arrives. In 2021, from January to October, 115 projects were submitted for approval joining the cash rebate program, investments on almost 160 million happens in Greece. Shooting has taken place in more than 146 different places in Greece, like Athens, Thessaloniki, Mani, Porto Heli, Peloponnesos, Lesbos, Chios, Nisiros, Aliartos, Mesologi, and other, and other places. And more than uh, 35,000 day work job have been created to all these places. ECOME financed 39 production with an amount of almost 10 million for joining the cash rebate program and invest in Greece. Moreover, we run the new tax, uh, tax relief program, deducting money from paying to the tax authorities as a motive to invest on a, in audiovisual plays. We run the film office network that works so efficiently in Thessaloniki and other places and a couple of other tools in order to strengthen the audiovisual sector in Greece. The pandemic is here, not for a long time, I hope. Anyway, we must find ways to deal with it, to overcome the problems and build trust and collaboration between the, the institutions, the producers and the stakeholders trying to establish Studios Greece as a brand name in the audiovisual industry globally. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Um, you raised a good point about stakeholders at the end and I have to say that this was a big uh, the, the huge question mark when the pandemic broke because it, it was it qualified as a force majeure um, as we all know uh, a force majeure is something that no no insurance will ever cover because that's the definition of, of a force majeure <laughs> um, and I want to ask uh, Bettina uh, if that was the main difficulty, because we all experienced uh, difficulties in, 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 in during, the, uh, during the pandemic and during the lockdowns, um, 
it all affected us in many ways, professional or psychological. And um, we're still going through that process. Um, so yes, what was the, was this the main pressure you had? Well, I had two pressures because one is that whenever we finance a film as a co-production, you promise to deliver a film, and you don't promise to deliver eight shooting days. You 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 know you promise to deliver a whole film. So, but we only had eight shooting days when we had to stop. And the second problem was exactly that that we have a very good insurance usually for all kinds of problems, but because it was force majeure, none of the insurance would cover it. So the question is, um, every stopping the machine of a film costs a lot of money, and restarting it costs money. And and so the the big question was how to raise the budget when we can continue, and how much will it cost to continue? And my biggest fear actually was that it would be cheaper to cancel the film than to continue. That was my biggest fear. So I did a lot of mathematics and budgets and trying to prove that it's better to finish the film than to ab uh, abandon it. Because at the time, everybody was saying, yes, but you cannot shoot in Europe for the next month. This will be... Uh, so it was really protecting the film and um, finishing it um, and finding people that believe that we can finish it. Um, that was one of the big things. And also to find more money for the film. That's also, we had a budget that would have been enough without COVID, but now we had a new situation and not enough money to finish the film. So that was big discussions. And then it was actually very good because all the people that support the film um, in every country made, uh, the governments made schemes and uh, possibilities to apply for a COVID uh, emergency funds and everything. But we never knew, because it was a European co-production, if all these things would work together. Because you have to understand that uh, a, a film in a European way, if it's a co-production, the financing plan, it's like little elements that all have to work together. You know, getting the cash rebate here means that I have to spend a certain amount of money, but it means I cannot spend it someplace else. So it all has to work together. And if, if we don't don't make it work as, as a unit together then and if you lose one part it means something you know if the percentage of a co-producer goes down or up it, it endangers the whole construction that we build it's a very um, sensitive construction that and if some elements change it can very easily collapse so my biggest thing was trying to make it work under the new conditions that were changing every day. And I think that's, uh, that was the biggest challenge, that there was no certainty anymore. There was only a lot of uncertainty and a lot of money lacking. So, <laughs> and uh, yeah. I don't know, but it was also very interesting because it also gave a sense of solidarity because all of a sudden we were all in the same place. We were locked in our apartments, uh, schools were closed, everybody was scared of their life. And it also made something very special because we, we were stuck in this as a world, as a European world or the whole world together. We all had the same issues and problems. So it was also a very special moment and very depressing at the same time. So, yeah. If I can add something to this, because I saw it there and it was really interesting. Because once I arrived at the, on the island, I had a mini interview with Bettina where she explained the whole story about how they stopped, the, how, how they wanted to start again. And it was also interesting to see how well the Greek cast and crew were working with the foreigners. Because you had mixed from Germany and Italy, right? And no. Greece. Italy, and Greece, right? But we, we are used to having mixed crews, but we're not as much used as having mixed actors. Well, well, we become to become used to it. We start to become used to it, but not as much at the time. And that was also very interesting to see how, how well they work together with the German uh, filmmaker as well, the director. Yeah, well, we have to give uh, kudos to Nana for uh, the director, Nana Noel, for achieving that because it was really, uh, it is a film that the story is, is inclu includes uh, all these three different nationalities and in, 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 the, in the Greek part, which is the final part of the film, there is a cast and of, of, of all these, uh, and there were people who never met before, they met on set 
uh, they had a few uh, days to rehe yeah, two meetings because also again you know we we uh, so so yes it was uh, it was a director's uh, achievement to be able to kind of blend uh, this cast and make it uh, make it work um, and um, Stamati, is there something you want to add because uh, yes. I think this, this, is, this goes very interesting about the financial scene because uh, the, the, the financiers should uh, combine uh, between them. And this is, of course, your job like a producer, but this is our job is to be flexible and to accept changes or to accept something if something happens. La, now, let's say, I think now there is an insurance about the COVID, but it's okay, it's very expensive, but at least there is one. Or uh, it's very crucial for me, for the institutions to, to, to accept the change of the shootings, to accept the change of the budget, to, and to, to be flexible with uh, the dates and all this. And uh, of course, nowadays, uh, we cannot we are talking about platforms, of course, because platforms, you cannot say that I, I, I'm, I'm doing only cinematography. And so this is something that keeps on uh, changing and we have to find the ways how to deal with it. But uh, to keep in mind that finally, cinematography is between all these. Yeah. We had to, in fact, uh, in the process, uh, change uh, and modify our application uh, towards ECOME because uh, uh, everything changed. <laughs> the dates we had uh, declared changed, the, the, the budgets uh, changed because suddenly we had to include all kinds of different things in the budget that were not there before. All this, all this COVID related uh, costs which were completely new. We didn't know how, how to, so we needed to, to modify all of that. Um, yeah, it was, uh, in fact, a very... Th 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 that said, because we keep talking about difficulties, and it was, in fact, uh, as uh, um, Bettina said at the beginning, uh, the most difficult uh, producer experience she had to, to, to battle. Um, in the end, it was, for me, and I think for everybody else involved in the film, uh, perhaps the most pleasant. It was like a par, like a like a window of 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 uh, our shoot uh, in in Amor, on Amargos was like a window of of light and and happiness in in for everybody involved. I think it was really like paradise because two things happened. We, when we made it to the island, it was clear that we would finish this film because this is a major part of the film. And we were possibly the only people not in home office and lockdown, but on a beautiful Greek island that was completely empty. And it felt a little bit like aliens uh, coming to a new world because everything was new and, and it was very beautiful. And also something happened that never happens in the film we got to spend almost a year together usually you spend a few months together but because we had to break and start new and so we got to know each other very well and it became almost like the corona second family because we were in this together all the heads of department state people were very true and um, and very nice to us and to me and to Konstantinos to to stay on board and to help us make this happen and that made it also a very special experience um, and in the and a, a positive ending um, because we really supported each other in very difficult times and it made us stronger together I think and it showed that we need some flexibility in certain moments and we need to uh, we need to find solutions and not look at problems you know we need to look at the solutions together and and that was possible and that made it one of the hardest but also one of the most satisfying films that when we could finish it so it's it's both it's a very special film uh, in in that sense that it it gave all the problems but it gave also all the hope that we can find solutions together and make things happen so it's a, it's a good uh, good outcome following to that i just want i remember that the day that i was on set um 
there was you were filming by the sea, by the beach near the port, and there was a, a ship coming in. And at some point, you had to stop shooting because there was a problem at the edge engine, and the ship had to stay there. Do you remember? Yes, of course, yes. And <laughs> if we wouldn't be in a COVID era, that would be a huge problem. I remember everybody was calm, as if nothing had happened. I mean, you've been through hell by that time, so having a boat in the middle of the shooting with a broken engine was nothing, and you just dealt with it with great, um, you know. Um, Put a lot of things in perspective. Usually, if a, if a ship destroys your scene, you're going wild because you lose time, you lose, lose money. But we were so happy that we were allowed to shoot at all that we were like, oh, yeah, it's a ship. Okay, okay. You know, it was a uh, more cigar, cigar. It will happen. Uh, no problem. It, uh, yes, it's true. <laughs> it, it really balanced a few things that usually make you crazy. Yeah. Uh, and um, okay, we all learn about uh, with all this new situation. But uh, as far as I talk to people, everybody uh, uh, says that uh, okay, in, in the end of the day, you cannot do it uh, from distance for so long time. So it's very crucial to be on board, to be there, to be to shootings, and we are very uh, proud and very uh, welcoming to see you, to, to see it happens. <laughs> I, I want to ask if there's anything uh, anyone would like to, to ask or say or add at that point, because I think uh, we, I've, I've covered most of the, uh, the things we wanted to cover, but uh, so if there's any, any, anything from you guys here, you lovely people, uh, we'd be happy to hear it. If not, uh, we can just call it a day and go to the happy hour. <laughs> so, any questions? No. Okay, so, uh, closing this, I just want to say a huge thanks again to, the, to, the, to all the institutions and organizations who supported us. Um, as we've also discussed earlier in a, in a, in a panel earlier, uh, this is an ecosystem that we all belong to, and every it's like a chain, and every and every piece of the chain needs to be in touch with the other for the chain to work. If one piece is apart, then the chain breaks. So that's that's and that was a big this this unprecedented uh, adventure that this film uh, turned out to be proved that if these chains can still hold together, then we're all fine. Uh, and um, closing this, I want to personally thank uh, Bettina. It was really a lovely experience working with you, uh, going through this crazy adventure together. Yeah, I, I have to thank Konstantinos, because uh, we were in the dark together, and we saw the light, and it was not the train coming at us. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm very happy, I'm very thankful uh, for the support we received in Greek, and I, for me, I can say, I want to come back and shoot again. So I will advertise shooting in Greece, because it was a very great experience under very special conditions, so it will be even better, I think, if we have normal conditions. It was wonderful. Thank you for the invitation.